<laughs> the icicle's gonna fall on Snoopy, and they take out a pizza, and they get him to come, and then it's like saved by pizza. Damn, that was a yeah. close call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is this called? Generous bosom. <laughs> Generous bosom. <laughs> Number one, top of the show. Connor. Wow, going right for it. No, I haven't read this at all. Oh, it's great. It's 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 been made into a movie. Really? That, I guess in between the third and fourth. A lot of sex yeah, going on in this. In between the third and fourth issue. He worked with people on the movie of it, which oh, I guess sick. I talked to him briefly at TCAF. He said it, that was sort of like instrumental in finishing the book. Was like he was mm. ri writing it, but like working on that film kind of helped. I think there's I haven't seen the movie. I think they're slightly different movie. Sure. Um, anyway, this is great. It's called Generous Bosom as individual comics, and I pulled this because it starts off with a great rainstorm. We were we were talking about drawing weather. Oh right, and, yeah. And, uh, because well, the weather in New York has just been insane the last. It was just week. raining like this for the past week mm -hmm. straight. Yeah, it was bananas. And like one of the the, thing, cool. the reason I pulled this was because not only I thought this was a printing mistake at first, but the more I looked at it, the more I think it's intentional. Is the it's rain? A road. Yeah, the, it's very faintly drawn and very. There's no outlines or anything in this, and then the rain. Like when you're inside in the rain, it feels like it's on you. And yeah. so it's this is layering the rain on top of the interior. I think it's really sure. smart. That's and cool. It, um, and because it like creates that, that feeling of like. You know, we know as people that it's not raining inside, but, uh, oh, cats are fighting. Cat uh, attack! We know it's not raining inside, but the feeling is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, yeah, because especially in this looks like a bar or something, it's like, you hear it on the roof, you'll hear it yeah, outside the window. Present. Yeah, it's, it's very like, it's cool. a, it's And it's a neat way to do it without sound effects. I know, and I really like the way they're making these forms, like the, they're making the, the road disappear here with these tire tracks, mm -hmm. and then... The branches, everything, it it really at first doesn't look like much of anything, and then it slowly comes into picture, which, this is beautiful. These panels are gorgeous. Yeah, and this was, this was drawn a while ago, um, and Connor Steck, Steckschult, I hope, okay. I hope I'm saying that right. That seems um, pretty good. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, first of all, you should buy this book. It's now called Ultrasound in the graphic novel version of it, and that's, oh, that's the name of the movie, too. Ultrasound? It's called Ultrasound. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I've yeah. seen them re-release that as that. Um, but check out Connor's newest work. He's working on something now, and the way he's doing light and texture and in these, like, I don't even know how the hell he's doing it, but he's just making some of these, like, completely gorgeous things. Whatever he's working on now looks really, like, astonishing. That's um, But these cool. rain effects wow. are so good. This was the page I bookmarked. Oh, I that's so about. cool. But this is the reverse, right? So they're talking over here, and, and the rain really is overlaid. Like, it's dropped in, and you can, it almost drowns him out so much. It's, like, it's mm. a really cool transition. I've never seen that before. And can only be done with, you know, spot colors or, or offset, however they're printing this. I don't think this is Rezo. I, I heard, offset. I was listening to uh, No Man Skyver on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, talking to Gary Panter and he was like yeah Gary was like when I did the raw thing I wanted him to print black on top of the black <laughs> instead of orange so you couldn't see anything <laughs> and he's like they didn't let me do that and I was like that's hilarious well, a legend <laughs> um, but yeah I think I, we just didn't think of drawing really heavy rain I think you know you can't just do it with like diagonal lines across the page you really have to approach the drawing with the rain in mind. Mm. Like, I think every aspect of the drawing needs to be affected by rain or snow or wind or whatever the thing is. This is successful, too, with the windshield. Yeah. Very cool. So great. And it's it's that lack of outline, you know, because things kind of blur and fuzz in the rain. Oh, man, when I was driving back from Indie Creator Con in Connecticut, it mm -hmm. started raining so hard, I couldn't see anything. I was, like, looking out the window, the windshield, and seeing just abstract shapes. Yeah. It just looked like a... Cy Twombly painting or something. <laughs> I was like, this isn't good. Just like little scribbles. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. I, um, this is beautiful. Too. And this is so homey and so cozy. And it also, you know, drop the tone completely out when you're inside. That feels cozy and warm. Yeah. You know, feel, it, the contrast between that and that is like, it's delightful. Very cool. Um, this book's super weird. Really goes in a lot of wild places and I, I can't recommend it highly enough. I think the, I think this is offset printed by... Um, oh yeah, Breakdown, Breakdown Press, which yeah. does a great job with everything, and then the, um, uh, I've looked at the hardcover too, and it looks, it looks great, so either, either format you want to When you were talking about Heavy stuff. Rain, I thought of this, and like, obviously we all know who this is, right? Like, oh, have you heard of Will Eisner before? Yeah, he's under the radar. <laughs> but, uh, but these images came to mind when we were talking about rain, and I think this is the yeah. heaviest rain that I can think of. Look at how syrupy it mm -hmm. is. And he's like, the pose of the guy, too, it plays the mm -hmm. role in that also. And you know what I noticed? And it's something that um, actually Josh was talking about, Bayer. He was saying, like, draw the rain as if it were syrup. 
Yeah. Like, don't draw it as it's water. Draw it as it's, like, sauce, mm-hmm. essentially. And then it, and it does play. Like, it makes so much sense to you. You see the rain gushing down. Yeah. If that's the goal. If it's pouring. Yeah, yeah. if it's I mean, pouring. I mean, there's obviously whatever. different, there's like, other ways different to go. levels of rain. Like, there's other ways to go. Absolutely. Yeah. But, like, I mean, look at that, right? You're drawing it as, like... The whole thing is just drenched in ranch mm-hmm. dressing or whatever. Yeah, and it and it again the syrup effect creates a feeling, especially like in New York if it's pouring like it was the last couple of days and like your umbrella gets fucked up because umbrellas are garbage. My umbrella broke. It's, yeah, it's right out of a movie. It goes right in the umbrella graveyard, which appears every time it pours. But that's the feeling, like yeah. you, that you feel like you're covered with weight, like it it has a physical presence. It's not just and, you know the lazy way to draw rain. I think is like slash 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 slash. Um, yeah, that's right, Charles Schultz. You're being, you're being lazy, Chuck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I brought Schultz because he's a G, obviously, right? Like he's uh... yeah. Well, it's shorthand. Like yeah, this, this yeah, isn't meant exactly. to. It's not a me- not meant to convey the same feeling. This is totally. this is raw cartoon. Yeah, rain. I know. I just wanted to show that off. That's an interesting point, though. I guess there is a difference between like illustrating the rain and cartooning the rain. Yeah, because I brought this other thing too, and it and the reason why I brought it is because that very reason. It's just like very cartoony. I had a bookmark in here, but it must have fallen out. So let me see if I can find the spot. But yeah, I mean, I brought the Schultz thing because it it reminded me of this. Mm. And it was like, this is that thing that we're talking about, right? This is the cartoony aspect of it, like illustrating. Yeah, it's almost like very sim- symbol for rain. Right. Um, so it's, rec- it's, it's the cartooning. I mean, this is, we could do a whole episode on this, I guess, illustrating versus cartooning. But the... The cartooning thing has to read instantly as what it is, and the illustrating thing is more like it's more evocative, it's more expressive. Right. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's like you're going for the icon mm-hmm. instead of, uh, you know, going for something more heavily rendered. Yeah, it's like emoji rain versus I don't mm-hmm. know, paint, painting the rain or something. I think there's some. I don't know if there's rain in here. I think I brought this. Oh, I brought this for snow. I know we haven't gotten to snow yet, but there, there's he does snow in this. That's just unbelievable. Snow is one of them. Snow is is uh, maybe. Do we think snow is easier? I don't know. It's more solid. Like you get the snow flake. You can do the big circles as your snowflake. You still get the downward precipitatory, like you know. Or I think it's like sleeting. Yeah, like a a, a wintry mix. Wintry mix. There you go. Yeah, you get that downward kind of uh, precipitation line. Yeah, I I pulled this. I pulled this one hundred percent. I marked this 100% book for the same reason, because this is, like, sleet. Um, and this is maybe somewhere in between illustration and cartoon, I guess, because he is drawing the actual trajectory of the flakes. I like that. Um, but there's there's wind to this, too. Like, this this page feels cold as shit. Like, the right. way this guy is walking through here, and the, and uh, all this, like, this one in particular. I like the so crunching. Much, so much glare on that it. That definitely puts you like, in a place. Yeah, yeah, that, this, like, I've felt this. Absolutely. You know, this is cold as hell. It's New York. It's loud. The the sound of your feet, the sound, of, like, you can feel the wind. It's really know, this, nice. Like, this really puts you in a spot. That looks good. In a way that, like, Schultz, you know, Schultz is not trying to put you in the position of lying on your back on top of the doghouse. Right, It's right. just a different approach. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, you know, Pope, Pope is so expressive of this stuff anyway, but... You know, the, the cool thing that he did, the trick that he pulls off the most is, like, you don't even know what this stuff is. It just feels right. <laughs> right. Well, that I think that's part of what is difficult about drawing scenes like that, is that you have to have these contour outlines with snow covering them, mm-hmm. and they don't all make sense. You right. Know? He'll yeah. definitely make sure to put in his boot brand, though. Oh, yeah. Paul Pope wears... <laughs> Diesel jeans. So, Soma boot, boots, what does that say? Soma, yes. <laughs> yeah, Diesel jeans. <laughs> Diesel jeans, baby. Here's some more Eisner snow. I thought this was appropriate because, you know, we're talking snow. And I, I think this yeah. is a, this has a nice feel to it, too. Delightful. Um, that's like a friendly snow. Though. Yeah, you know, it's friendly. Like, I want to I wanna hang out in that This snow. is like we're going Christmas shopping. Look yeah. at how beautiful it is, right? It's not as aggressive. And look at the the true, like, compared to the Eisner guy slouching home in the in the syrup rain, you guys are just standing up, like, mm-hmm. having a chat. You know, the, yeah. the, the physical posture when drawing the weather has an impact on how the weather feels. Yeah, like how it's perceived, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a little bit of wind here. We get a, uh, someone shoveling. And I love this, like, you know, Seeing the snow build up on stuff, I think, is pretty key. We need, mm-hmm. like, you need to know where your surfaces are so you can depict this, like, build up in different increments. And yeah. that's what gives that kind of cold snow yeah. feeling. This is interesting. So, do we think this is snow and this is wind? Mm, I are think these it's marks meant to be different things. 
I'm not sure. I mean, it's impossible to say. Because like, well, here, this looks like wind. Yeah. Like on this, in this whole So spot. it would seem like if it's closer to the ground, it feels more like wind. Hmm. If it's higher up, it could be read more like precipitation. I think it's probably both, right? I mean, like, there are some white media used here, too. You can see it. Yeah. He so he's, like, cutting the, in um, some white media. In the syrup guy, too, the the, the yeah. light post in the background was white. Yeah. Like yeah, a flare. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, look at that. See, this, nice. oh, this is great. Those contour lines for the side of the... It's right. like buildings and wind and perspective all the same Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And it's also a panel break. It's also like a panel he break. He does that a lot. Yeah, Eisner almost, does that a ton. He creates beast. his own panel borders with just the way he's depicting things. It's yeah. great. All these unconventional panels that he's making with his drawings. I mean, there's that's something very much worth taking from, uh, you know, like a page out of his book in mm -hmm. that respect. And it reads really nicely, you know, where the blacks are spotted. You know, your eye is still going this way. Yeah, he brings that eye path for sure. Very cool. Super cool. Have you heard of Eisner? Will, will you? I Billy? told him I said, they Billy, got an award with your name on Billy it. Billy Eisy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they named him after the award. <laughs> um, I got this one out, because the hardest thing I was trying to find was wind. I was looking through mm -hmm. all this stuff last night yeah. and trying to find wind stuff. And I thought this page was really cool from Middle of Nowhere. Oh, nice. Um, and it's, I guess, this is the one of the only examples I could find where it's wind without rain or snow. Like, he's just drawing wind mm. flying through this area. And look at these, like, little bits of confetti-like marks that he's making mm -hmm. to show you that the wind is picking up, like, you know, detritus or whatever. It's like, you know, it's got that, like, um, what do they call it? Um... I forget um atmospheric perspective they call that mm. you know how like as you know how when we depict things in comics like as they go back in the horizon the lines get lighter and fainter yeah, yeah, yeah. that's to represent a phenomenon called atmospheric perspective which is all the dust and moisture in the air reflects the light mm. and so it makes a hazy it the, makes things the yeah it makes things far away seem hazy mm. and if we can enter in marks that appeal to those like the dust and the moisture and all the things that we can't see then we're creating the feeling of wind because something's moving and we can tell that something's moving yeah but yeah and it's neat to do the same effect on the clouds oh that's cool yeah the, I wind, like the, cloud. the wind is it, first of all these are just really neat abstract shapes yeah but the uh the wind is going to move the clouds so i think to use the same line mark making to draw the wind and the clouds at the same time creates this like they're like there's so much motion in this panel i think it's interesting and, and too tiny still little it's interesting too space. that the title is the middle nowhere mm -hmm. right like leaving out middle of nowhere and like that kind of changes the meaning of what this what this story is about yeah um i read this as part of uptight and i read this like out of sequence and just random issues that i picked up which i really enjoyed i haven't read the full collected um, i have a couple yet. i picked up all I found him on the street, actually. Oh, I wonder if we together we have the whole thing. We might. Well, it's but, like a Triforce or something. Yeah, just really, really effective. Like I feel like I can, <laughs> I feel like I can hear the wind like whistling through the door That's and the cool. window here. It's pretty I like cool. That. And I, these are like little. I guess these are bits, or they, these might even be like semi sound effects. They're oh, like sure. they're like letters. They're like yeah. a, alluding to right something. Or actually, maybe they build in here to what's. Oh, these it's are actually part of sound that creaking, things. yeah, noise that the wind can make. Yeah, really sets sets I feel a nice like scene. There was some wind in here. I'm not sure. I found one. Oh yeah, look at this shit. That that's how you do it right there. That is that very is like, good. That's like both illustrating and cartooning at the same time. I feel like that makes me feel like I'm on a ship. You know. Yeah, it makes me like cold. I'm on a pirate ship. Yeah, like I. It's like. Did you have you seen the lighthouse? The, uh, the lighthouse. Oh yeah, Willem you know Defoe what? And I Pattinson. started. I started watching it, and then I got about halfway through it, and I was like, "This is too much yelling for me." Oh, dude, I, I love that movie. Like, if it's if I, if I'm ever like home by myself, and it's like a cold, rainy night, I put that movie on, and just like lean in. I just it was driving me insane. Oh, like, yeah, like it was making me nuts. It's like great. I was like, I gotta go, you guys. Like you guys <laughs> yeah, figure yeah. it out. I'm gonna go. Fantastic. All right. Anyway, I got a little Jordan. little more wind too. I just thought this was fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not even specifically wind, but like. But suggested. he's like running. He's like running a marathon. So mm -hmm. it like the motion becomes the wind, which becomes the air, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. I think the only other wind I found was in the Seagate book, which is just one panel. And it's like a little break, which works really well. It's just like a story beat. There's this like little, couple little oh, lines, cool. a little sound effect of just like, if there's all this stuff going on, there's people talking, and it's really just a way to break the tension. Like it's a story beat before something else happens. It, hasn't, it has nothing to do with the weather. 
or anything that's going on. It's really just like a. I love that. It's really nice little little moment. I brought some. This has some wind in it. So this book is called Garlandia. This is one of the my favorite purchases that I've ever made because this book is a beast. It's so thick. Yeah, you were showing me that last time. And. I had never heard of this book before. You yeah, me. it's an Italian artist, uh, Matadi, and um, his partner. So this book is is like an almanac for mark making. You can see a little example of it on the cover, but I brought this because of all of the atmospheric stuff that he's doing in here with different types of mark making. Yeah, so, what, so like, wait, what's happening in this? I mean, it's it's unclear. Part of this is like fantasy. Hold on, let me just move this so I don't have to hold the yeah, book. Make a, little table. make a little table for it. It's so heavy. So... A lot of this is fantasy, right? Like he lives in a world that's very similar to like, um, Seuss, like a Seussian type world, right? Mm -hmm. And in this, I think he's just getting blown back, and you can see the wind as it's blowing him, or it could be a river. I don't even really remember. Let me here. Let me... Oh yeah, so this is actually like lava like from a volcano, or yeah, I mean basically, I mean except it doesn't burn him up at the touch so yeah that's so great yeah so i feel like cool. i look at that forever like that, that's mesmerizing i'm telling you this whole book is like this it's packed from start to finish with different types of line make marks lines textures mm -hmm. flow like all of the atmospheric like stuff contour, we're talking about yeah it's like all the it's like all the stuff i teach the kids like here's the elements of art in one big unbelievable thing. this whole book is astonishing and it's mostly wordless i mean there are some words in it but it's a lot of this big sweeping <clears throat> big sweeping motions mm -hmm. and like really interesting fantastical characters like very strange characters that you don't really know what they are you know they resemble animals you might know but i brought this because of all the different types of wind storms um rushing motion like we could just go page by page you know we should do a kind of deeper dive on this but what I thought was interesting is he's using big, slashy, calligraphic lines to mm -hmm. make wind, and then he's using a lot of lines to make motion. Again, you know, every he's coming at it from a bunch of different directions, right? Mm -hmm. You have this, like, main flowing path. You have these, like, calligraphic lines, like I was saying, giving you some contours to follow with your eye. Yeah. It's, and, not, it's not too busy, either. Like, there's a lot of marks on the page, but it doesn't feel confusing or flat. You know, sometimes you can dump dump too much texture on a page, and it just feels like it's just noise. I brought a couple. I I made a couple other marks in here too. Because, yeah, exactly. So I, I I figured out I'd show a couple different spots in this book where different things are happening, and this is darkness around a fire, mm -hmm. which I know isn't exactly weather, but it is elemental. And just look at this. I mean, it's clear why we're looking at this. Yeah. You can see it on the page. I don't need to say anything about it. It's like obsessive. Absolutely. Kind of mark making. It's, it's and it almost cool. looks like, what was the thing that you... Spirograph. Spirograph. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Spirograph vibes, But it's sure. like DIY Spirograph. Yeah, I mean, DIY he's doing it himself. Yeah. Maybe he created some kind of, like, mechanism to put his pen in. Well, you can almost feel the rhythm of it. Like, yeah. this is not something you do slowly. This is gestural. Right. It's expressive. And, like, you're, he's just whacking those lines I, on there. I'd really like to know how big they worked on these like how big the originals are because yeah. i have this feeling like he's standing on, like a painter would in front of a big canvas and like just making arm circles with oh, like yeah. a big piece of charcoal or something you know it's possible i mean it looks inky it's definitely ink i mean well i can't know that but it feels like ink yeah check that out yeah, those waves are sick. I know, it's so impressive. This whole book is amazing. And like I'm saying, this is one of my favorite books that I own. Whenever I feel like I'm making the same marks, I just kind of like look at this and uh, it gets me back on track. Yeah. We're talking clouds, we're talking sky. Yeah, this book's got it all. It, it really also, does. Also, this is great too. Like you don't have to show a little poof. You know that's being blown exactly. in that direction. Like you, know, like the poof wind is almost like cheating. And these are like wind whales or whatever, like... Yeah, you see, like, they're coming in on the wild. sky. It's, like, really has these wonderful, fantastical moments about it. Mm -hmm. I um, love stuff like this, too. I really want to draw... I like when there's a completely flat plane mm -hmm. with really complicated contour pouring off of it. That really sets that surface really well. Even just these plateaus, like, I mean, they're well, so well done. Mm -hmm. Like, not overworked. They're, they have a wonderful topography, but they're not, like you know obsessive it's like he knows where to hatch and where not to yeah look yeah, at that there's a oh, oh my goodness dense. so again we get the wind we get the fire we get the smoke and then these trees are just gorgeous mm -hmm. and still a nice use of negative space too like 
you could easily fill that up with more of this stuff, but you, you could. Lo you'd lose the dialogue and you'd lose the characters, so it's smart. It's also a nice visual break, too. You know, you have this huge, heavy page, and, like, if there's a relief to it. Because th there is, I think, a thing that, like, I need to remember for that I, for my own work, too, is, like, you gotta... You can't just jam everything in there. Yeah, yeah. You can't jam in all the time. Yeah. You gotta give palette... You can't like a jam in all the time. <laughs> you gotta need a palette cleanser, you Yeah, know? totally. Or just pacing breaks, you know? There's yeah, like, yeah. But visually... This is astonishing. Uh, unbelievable. Like you, like, you could hang this up in a museum. Somewhere. 100%. So what's the other, uh, I got two more bookmarks in here, so let's check them out. So this one again, I think it was just wind. I was looking at light. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard somebody say something really interesting today, which is vertical lines should be coming towards you and horizontal lines should be going away from you. Whoa, interesting. And it was like a really weird way to think about how you might angle vertical lines and horizontal lines. Mm. And I think this panel kind of really sums that up pretty well. It's like... Huh. You should be thinking about vertical lines as receding from the picture plane away from you and and horizontal specifically specifically in comics for in terms of comics no i think it, we're just talking about drawing in general like mm. composition because i wonder if part of that is like horizontal move horizontal lines move you across the page mm. vertical lines then move you down if it's like an angling a reading angling thing or like a you know, yeah, zigzagging through the page. Thing. I think it's interesting. I think it's it's uh, challenges your idea when you're putting down lines to make you think. Okay, well, how can I angle these so they're dynamic? And right. it, that's a little shorthand, right? It's not a rule by any means, but it's like think about think about angling these lines. So my horizontal lines moving away from me, and my vertical lines are moving towards me, yeah. and that creates some di you know some dynamic uh, interplay there in the right. picture. Well, but also, just like I actually didn't notice this until I looked at the screen, but like. You know, trying to moving your eye, like characters, lines, all this is coming out, dialogue, and then bam. Yeah, and, and then, then back, back this right. way, dialogue, back that way, mm. character up. Like, that's, yeah. it's perfect. It's, it's like, good it's really device. simple, but really, yeah. really well done. It is very effective, yeah. That's a good call. Without without being too obvious. Creating the eye path there. Yeah, without, well, because, like, this is still those lines. Yeah. And those are not just there to fuck with your eyes. Right, right, right. Those are still part it's, of the same drawing. It feels natural. logic, yeah. It works with the logic of the picture. Let's see. That's I mean, cool obviously, this is super cool. Wait, are they crying down the mountain? What are, are these tears? Yeah. Wow. Let's see what they become. Because they go into that whirlpool, and they grow yeah, into, this like... This book is wild. It's wild, yeah. The whole thing is wild. And then it's like a diamond or something they pick up, and it's when they... It's long as shit. There's 300... <laughs> There's 350 pages There's in this? more. There's almost 400, oh I think. God. So then this was the other part I brought up because... Yeah. It's like a tornado. It is, yeah. And we were looking for, like, storms mm -hmm. that... Or weather patterns or systems that don't often get depicted. And I thought, well, this not only does this have that kind of, like, Dust Devil vibe to it, mm -hmm. but it also is amazing. And it's like fantasy. So it's like... It's pretty cool that it lives in both worlds. Like, we can accept it as a storm. Right. And we also know that it's a complete fantasy world. Yeah. This is another one that's, like, it's both illustrating and cartooning the story at the same time. Oh, there's a little more wind there. Yeah. A little flying character. So, yeah. So, this book, Garlandia, I'm a huge fan. Wow. This is a I really love book. it. Yeah, I guess so. Fanographics. Let's check the... Oh! With the FB, oh, don't, no flaming, no flaming, no logo. flaming carrot. It's a uh, Santoro will be happy. Yeah, it's just the FB. <laughs> so that's how you can date your fanographic books, right there. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if this wasn't a bigger deal because it's so fucking huge. Like, I bet not many stores ordered this. Yeah, I think, and also, you know, this. Where did you oh, get this? I got this at Desert Island. Okay, but I picked it up and was like, whoa! And when I looked at the mark making, I was just like, whoa! They drew Josh Bear on every page. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, when I saw these fantasy, like, oh, yeah. characters, Writers I was just like, stuff. this is amazing. Yeah. This is cool. You know, I've been wanting to do um, an episode on, like, children's books that are like this. Yeah. Because there's a lot of weird, cool, illustrated children's I was, books. I was thinking that earlier. This that made you, me think of this. You don't often see this in comics. I think maybe partly because it is so laborious. It's, yeah. The style is more suited to something. It's, like, 24, 25 pages. Right. Then. You're doing an illustration, a page, yeah. instead of all this stuff. But he really goes in on this book and... This is probably one of the most underrated gems that I've ever found. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody talks about this book ever, so... I've, I've never heard of it until you brought it up. I love this book. It's one of my favorites. You you may not borrow it. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> of, course you, <laughs> of course you can borrow it. I was just trying to mess with you. Uh, man, where do we go from there? I, well, I pulled this book. We, um, one thing I we haven't talked about yet is Lightning. Um, this book rules. This is one of my favorites from last year, What a Waste Them by Liam Cobb. It's a oh, cool. collection of short stories from Breakdown. Always, always killing it. Um, and a wildly different 
um, techniques in here, but there's just one story that involves these guys in the woods. It has this kind of similar to um, ultrasound generous bosom kind of effect. It's this mm. like washy kind of pencil thing. But yeah. there's this incredible. Um, so it does this thing where it wa wipes out Ooh, that's the cool. wipes out the outlines like we were talking earlier as the rain sets in like building mm. building the drops and then whoosh it all falls that's apart. That's very cool. And then there's um, at least I think I'm that's remember, beautiful. remembering this correctly. Yeah. Then there's this double page lightning spread. Whoa, Look at that shit. Sick. I'm not even totally sure how you do that analog because it's it's you could do it with like a um, what's it called frisket or what are the uh, Masking yeah. fluid yeah. With, with watercolor, but I think this is pencil. Like I don't even know how that's really, how you really. Do well, it. the white is probably paint, and it's maybe. a combination of paint and pencil. Because like you can something. see some splatter in here. Yeah. So that's just that's toothbrush right there. Yeah. But um, maybe it's more simple than. I but thought. it's but really it's, cool. It, it's just perfectly. It's executed. beautiful. I mean, yeah. and you know, I wonder if they Straight did it all in graphite and then scanned it and colorized it. That's possible. Or yeah. if they did it all in green pencil. It might also be digital. I don't know. It could be, yeah. It could be partially digital, yeah. I mean, there is digital stuff in here for sure. Like this mm, shit is mm -hmm. definitely either. It's interesting. Together. I do see the. I do see the. Oh, that's cool. Let's yeah, this one. is so. This is like a transition between water to like. Oh, I wanted to see the that. Yeah, to shower. Oh, that's so good. So there's a lot of kind of like surreal kind it looks of. Looks like a jellyfish. Visual transitions. Yeah, this book is amazing, and this this person Liam Cobb can really like draw their ass off. That was what attracted to me this to me the most. Also, I think some bubbles board people were hyping this book up. Do we know Liam? I feel like we know Liam. I've never met Liam. Um, I think he's a UK person. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, very cool. Um, highly recommend this book. All these stories are great. A couple cool of them are stuff. like kind of fucked me up a little bit. They're like sort of emotional, mm. um, and some of them are just goofy. And there's this weird Michelin Man character Hell fighting yeah. the Kool Aid Man. Oh yeah. Um, but that that weather one really like struck me. There's oh, some there's some snow, snow in here too. Look at that. I forgot about Fortune that. Fortune smiles upon us. Damn. Weather happens. The Salinger all Hotel. Around, all around us. It's like Hateful Eight. Um, yeah. Really evocative. Like this. Very cool. Uh, silent. I like the splatter as the snow too because it does yeah. give that effect of some being closer than others. I do think snow is probably the easiest one. You think of all the weather patterns? Maybe. I don't What's know. the toughest one? Wind, I would guess. Wind is the toughest? I would think so. I mean, I've seen the the least wind. What about clouds? Do clouds factor into our weather, uh, our weather episode? They're part of, they're part of the weather. Yeah, they're part of that weather cycle. I mean, Mobius draws great clouds. Let's look at. Uh, take us through the Bill Watterson. Oh, I just pulled one of these because when we first started talking about weather, Watterson was the first one that came to mind. I think just because well, as, as, as a kid, like specifically the snow stuff. Although looking through these, he rarely draws it actually snowing. Like he draws them, he draws them mostly playing in the snow. I see. But this particular um, page has always been one of my favorite strips of just this them like waiting to hang out at the end. I just find <laughs> so tender and so sweet. Yeah. That's but adorable. he does such a great job with the colors. Like when you're yeah. inside a school bus. It would be so easy to just do this, like, blue, or, you know, purple and blue, or it's cold, or it's wet, or whatever. But it's right. that, like, mustardy <laughs> overtone to the inside of the bus. Uh, it's so great. And maybe These are was, definitely uh, the colors of the seven, late 70s, early 80s right there. Yeah, but it feels like the morning of a rainstorm, you know? Yeah. Like, the, these are not intuitive color choices. These are, right. like, artful cho artful color choices for a rainy day. It must have, been, the, must have been difficult to get those on the four-color you know presses too like yeah they probably did some rounds of color correction i would imagine yeah well i know he was like cutting pieces by hand he was cutting he was, like cutting color samples by hand and like pasting them up and stuff we got to go to the billy ireland and we, look at that's all like those the pages. biggest reason i want to go we're going yeah, we're, we're going, going baby we're going to the billy ireland you'll catch us at all the fests in september of 2024 yeah. do you have this book the i do um i do the sunday that. pages that was it's where the I, exhibition catalog. Yeah, that was where I learned about how he did the color stuff. He talks about yeah. it in the intro. I saw I it. I saw he he did a paste up one for. I actually saw the cover of this. Oh wow! Really? Look to the cover for a sec. I saw this illustration they have at the Billy Ireland, and he has like a layer of acetate with the color painted. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, because you couldn't just drop that into the newspaper. Right. Like this, the color Sundays, you had to 
prep prep the printing process for CMYK. Well, let's not bury the lead. Let's look at more. Uh... Yeah, we're, oh, yeah. <laughs> I bought this in college. I love Seriously, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Look at that. That's more. Oh, yeah, and that's all inky rain too. That's really how but, it feels. Bro, I'm gonna say, <laughs> com, um, you know, no, no disrespect to Schultz or whatever. Like, compare that to the Snoopy page. This is this this sets the tone. Let's do it. This is just a gag. right? Very similar, but yeah. But, but I see feeling, what you mean. That's you know? a feeling. This is a for feeling. Sure. This is just a gag. Very similar rain depiction though. Mm -hmm. They have puddles though. That's so huge. Puddles the posture it's look there's a little bit of bouncing off the head actually let's talk about that for a second oh yeah if you want if I'm gonna, yeah I'm gonna yeah flex, yeah i'm gonna flex on this drawing real quick okay go um, for it. i did this last night as just like a study of like what makes rain or i just wanted to before i started looking for work i was like what is what, what are the what are the things you need for rain and i think it's like the droplets is one yeah and this little what you were talking about earlier the syrup right sitting on the surface yeah, something the that gives it like a little form to, to to give weight to the form and then um, how it impacts textures. So like, is the hair wet? Is the is the are the clothes dripping or whatever? So mm -hmm. I think those were kind of the three like things I thought for. Oh, and the, then the oh the sorry, thing, so. and the and it bouncing off, right? Did you mention that? Yeah. So bouncing off the top of the surface. Yeah. Affecting the texture of the surface and then the actual droplets. Of Hell the thing, yeah! I think are kind of like not that there's any rules, but those were the the things I came up with of like what makes it look like effective rain. And so you see here, there's a little bit of the bouncing off. And of we get that, head we get that puddles. here too. Like that's yeah, what's going on here. Like that you lose the top edge of everything because yeah. the rain is washing it out. Exactly. That's the shit. But not on Snoopy so much. Man, we're mm -hmm. really getting on old, old uh, Sparky today. Yeah. <laughs> Check. Sparky, Check. you're still the man. We Check love you, us. obviously. Um, i You know what? I've never had a peanuts face. I got no beef with peanuts. I, I just, just never spend any time with it. I mean, I don't know. You, uh, you know, I have two eyes and a heart, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I can look at these characters and immediately fall in love. You know, the I found some Peanuts books that were like, yeah, from what the, is this? Page? This is just like a page out of a book from the 50s. I found a stack of old coverless, like soft cover books from the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. They're like first paperback edition collections of oh, of the good old Charlie Brown strips. Mm -hmm. And they're falling apart. And it was really cute because one of them says Dave. Oh. And it's crossed out. And then they wrote Nick. <laughs> and then Dave ripped the Nick part away. So it's just <laughs> N and a K. And I was like, this book was meant for me. This These is like me. Beefing over they were beefing They were beefing over the peanut book. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, what else is there to be said about Watterson? But he draws, draws great nature, great weather i love calvin and hobbs i've so always best. loved it i'm like I, I feel like going to billy ireland's gonna be like a religious experience in a way that i've never had a religious experience before well we'll talk to some of which the people is, which is zero <laughs> we'll talk to the, some of the people ahead of time and we can get them to pull the the originals for us and we can just sit there with them Dude. in the reading room and then we can sit and draw from them too i don't even want to go to the show i'm just gonna go to the museum well we'll make sure to we'll make sure to give ourselves an extra day you know yeah i'm gonna take a day off of school i think Make, you know, a, make a meal out a of it. A day that's not the show. Yeah, exactly right. Aw. I got that on the wall from the Washington I Post, know. baby. It, but I, this is the snow we're talking about. I yeah. mean, that's fantastic right so there. So great. That's quack This made me cry as a kid. I remember yeah. getting this in the mail and just being like, damn, that's it. It's a huge bummer. Nailed it. When though. it ends. It's perfect. But it's a good ending, yeah. It's like perfect. just going on another adventure. What a beast. So good. Um, yeah, Let's look know, at I mean, Julia's book. Yeah, oh yeah, let's look at Julia's book. Julia's um, super cool. So great. Actually, this, this I, I think, is, like, maybe adjacent to that big the big book you were talking about because it's there's a lot of lines on this page. Um, Julia this Gref already looks amazing. Julia Gaffrey, um, huge fan. I think I have almost all of their work. They put out great, like, great minis. Um, they have an amazing one on, like, how to, how to make zines, how to make a zine stand for your show out of cardboard. Like, I actually want to do that, track that, track that cool. book down. Um, you know, a real, real... Scion is the right word for self publishing, yeah. So um, that's a good word, and uh, these collections are really nice, that's beautiful, lovely drawings. Anyway, the page I marked there's like a big shipwreck or a Whoa. ship ocean storm, yeah. This is awesome, um, yeah. And I love this too because this is this is such an amazing transition of this is all one image, right? Divided into panels, mm -hmm. but you feel the storm building on this boat, and then you're like, damn, this is a big storm, damn, that boat's gonna be in trouble, and then dedicating these separate panels to the to the crushing like wind and building of that storm and that like it makes the whole thing feel so impactful like that boat feels so small mm. in a way that it, i don't think it would if this was just one big image like, i wonder dividing this up has such an impact 
I would love to ask Julia if they had fun making this or if this was laborious and a pain in the butt. You know how some people really enjoy this kind of work mm -hmm. and some people are like, you just got to get it done. You yeah. Know? And you're like, okay. It's cool because it's even without the boat, like it's just a beautiful drawing. It's beautiful. And it, tells, yeah. it tells a huge story. Even without this, like, you know, that's clouds, you know, it's mm -hmm. a storm. Even though there's very little context to it, it's just. I art. love drawing just clouds. I've drawn clouds since I was a kid. I love them. Yeah, um, and so yeah, re another like, fill the fill the panels with marks, but totally clear to read. You know, like the wave marks are different from the rain marks. Mm -hmm. um, they're going in different directions. The waves. Are, it's like perfectly readable, even though it's completely, Full you know, mark obsessively maybe. filled with marks. And you feel like cold and wet, and you're like, "Damn, are they? Gonna, I, I want to get them back on that boat." <laughs> you know, or where I love going. the thunder as part of the background you know that's it's not cool. a separate sound effect it's like in the sky yeah that's awesome great stuff this this is probably my favorite of julia's this one um black is the color it's cool it's just a great a great read perfect length and it really like hits at the end great stuff great figures too yeah and immediately recognizable i mean julia's style is so distinct and i think it's like it would be easy to try to mimic but really hard to do effectively yeah because um, it's like really straightforward and she's rad like i met julia on the way down to spx last year i was just like oh can i help you put that bag up mm -hmm. you know and i grabbed the bag to put it up on the train and it weighed a billion tons and i go <laughs> i go this is full of books isn't it and she's like yeah and i go are you going to spx and she's like yeah and so then i was like me too and i left her alone i didn't bug her but then we ended up on the same train going to the fest with the bart or whatever it is not oh, the yeah, bart uh, uh whatever it is in uh, the metro the metro yeah. yeah we ended up on the metro together and so then we started chatting yeah we're and she rules she's awesome cool yeah great stuff she's good people um yeah i mean that, that pretty much covers it i pulled some other stuff but nothing we haven't really talked about i guess all right let's just show this real quick i mean everyone probably knows what this is who's like, that this uh Fr francis mie <laughs> um anyway i mean just like that's if, pretty cool if you're gonna draw just like negative space rain like that's the way to do it that's cool this one looks nice I should have brought my Brian Bolland drawings. Yeah, really super cool stuff. It's interesting, too, to see somebody like this watch their figure drawing and their... I mean, look at that shape. is just... So mark cool. making just evolved to the most simple and most efficient way yeah. of using space. It's interesting, too. I mean, not that we have to talk about Frank Miller or anything, but, like, the first book is the only one that does it right to me. Mm. The, the other ones, he, like, wusses out. Like, he starts outlining shit again. It looks uh -huh. like half-assed. But this one is just, is really that raw shapes. It's just black and white. You know, there's, there's sure. actually very little line making unless it's like bright white like that. But like this stuff here, like it's just shadows and encroaching white. Like that, this is a tremendous technique that he's accomplished here. And I guess right. maybe he just felt like he perfected it or something. Yeah, he was probably just wanting to explore other things. Um, we don't have to talk about Sensei, but I just, I love this rain sequence here. It's so cool. I had a, uh, in college, I had a spawn poster from something wizard, sure. wizard maybe but it's drawn in this style <laughs> it's just black and white and like spawn on a statue that's like the most 90s sentence. yeah i remember like gr like girls would come over and be like what the fuck is that <laughs> this uh i brought this um and i mostly just because i wanted to talk about tatsumi oh, pushman right so this book is people treating each other really poorly basically like people behaving badly i also think Wait, what's is not flipped in this book Correct. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it is flipped. It's, well, it's flipped. It's it's it's, it's flipped re for English. Yeah, reading. it's readable. Uh, readable. It's readable in the um, in the Western style, so it hmm. goes from left to right. But you know, there were elements of wind done very iconically. Oh yeah. Whoosh. And then there were elements of rain done that we looked at earlier, but all throughout this book, they're just people just abusing each other, like men and women who can't get along. Everyone, all the characters are obsessed with sex. It's very, like, working class. Mm -hmm. So everyone's trying to make make do, and they're all just miserable and treating each other poorly. It's really dark, too. This is a tough recommendation. Is that, do you like this book? No, no, it's great. Okay. The storytelling's amazing. What I'm saying is the cartooning belies the subject matter Ooh. because it looks really, like, kind of open, kind of, like, friendly cartooning. Mm -hmm. And it actually is just about the like depravity it's like really people just there's so much stuff in here about like you know unwanted pregnancies and just like stuff that you would i mean it's just it's really disturbing actually some of it wow yeah I here's some know, uh... here's a uh, sparky doing some snow <laughs> <laughs> look right here that's a sharp right turn <laughs> yeah sorry i don't want to talk about it in that <laughs> other book anymore 
And once I got started thinking about it, he's doing some stuff. Yeah. Look, the icicle's going <laughs> to fall. <laughs> That's the that, gag. We should make that t-shirt. Charles Schultz, he's doing some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the icicle's going to fall on Snoopy, and they take out a pizza... And they get him to come, and then it's like saved by pizza. Damn, that was a yeah. close call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming out. Yeah. Um, as I... we say in the biz, toodles. Toodles. Yeah, toodles. <laughs>